Hi, everyone. Lovely to have you with us today. It's another session, another webinar, um, another benefit to being within the network of ICNCI. And I know that today would be exciting, would be beneficial, and it would add knowledge to you. Um, we announced this as a webinar that was hosted by Patrick. However, we now have a surprise because we have two speakers that are going to alternate in providing the information, in making it interactive, and in making it a session that is not forgettable easily. Um, I would like to welcome Patrick Downs and Fergus Robinson. Uh, both would be, as I said, co-hosting, and I would like to introduce both. Patrick Downs is the CEO of the Institute of Management Consultants in Ireland. So most of, most probably most of you already contacted him, talked to him, or has been in touch with him. Prior to uh, being at uh, IMC Ireland, he served at C-suite level across a number of organizations. And he's recognized as an expert in remote working and corporate governance, and is a published author and sought after speaker. And that's why we have him today with us. He has served on many boards, including as chair of the Corporate Governance Association and on the alumni board and the National University of Ireland. Pat is a member of the Harvard Business Review Advisory Council and is the founder of Lionheart and a co-founder of a remote working consultancy practice. So he knows all about consulting, he knows all about remote, and that's why he's with us today to enrich our knowledge. Fergus, who's also the co-host, is uh, a senior manufacturing and operations leader with over 30 years of experience. He worked with many global mul multinationals in Europe, China, and, and South Korea. So he brings the international aspect to the table as well. He holds a master's in industrial engineering and just recently completed a professional diploma in transversal skills. So both of them today would do a great job at going through the presentation they prepared for us. And as you all know, this is going to be recorded. It will be on the YouTube. So we will send you the link. And other than that, we will send you the presentation uh, that Patrick and Fergus will be sending to us. Let's start, Pat. Fergus, the mic is yours. You're both co-hosts. Please share your presentation and take us on a beautiful journey. Pat, you need to unmute first, my dear. Well, that's a classic example. I was just testing you there, Rima, to see uh, if you fell into that trap that I set for you. So the first thing that we all see kind of for 2020 and 2021 is you're on mute. So um, I'm looking forward to buying that T-shirt uh, when we get out of lockdown uh, in, in a while. So, so I look, fell in it. <laughs> so Rima, um, thank you for that. And in the spirit of all things consulting, you're getting two for the price of one added value. My colleague Fergus is joining us here today, and he brings a, a huge bit of knowledge in, in the areas he's going to cover. So look, first things first, uh, we're delighted to have the opportunity to speak with you here uh, in the Institute today. And I see, you know, we have a really, bless you, truly global audience. And we have members, um, I'm just looking across from Brazil, Singapore, across the Caribbean, Indeed, Jordan, the Lebanon, Kazakhstan, US and Canada, right across the globe, even Ireland, uh, our little Green Isle here on the west coast of Europe. So on behalf of Fergus and myself and our partners, uh, we are, um, I suppose, delighted to be able to share some of the insights that we've learned, which uh, over the last period of time and in, in this particular pandemic. And we'd like to kind of leave you with some practical tips uh, when you leave this presentation today. Uh, I guess our story is interesting uh, insofar as we were born out of the pandemic. Uh, as indeed a lot of organizations were, and we're, we're all in this together. Um, and as our two partners, Grace Ann and, and Sarah would say, it's been uh, uh, an absolutely pleasure, uh, I guess, to come together in difficult circumstances. And they send greetings to you. Uh, they're not able to join us today. But I guess we're interesting insofar as we are truly virtual. We work seamlessly together every day, um, but we've never actually physically met. So it's, it's quite remarkable. Uh, so you could say we are living our mission and values from a consultancy point of view in this digital world. But, you know, enough about GSP and, you know, later we can have a chat about that. And uh, if there's any kind of interest in that space, we'll talk to that as well. But to the matter at hand, I'm guessing you all got your cup of coffee or your cup of tea or your glass of water and you're ready to go. Um, as Rima has said, from a GDPR point of view, we're recording this session. And uh, indeed, we'll be happy to answer any questions you may have as they arise or at the end of the session. Uh, and I understand the slide deck and video will be shared with you later. 
And, and to that end, if I could ask you all to mute uh, at this point, that'd be great. Um, so just in case, uh, if everyone can make sure they're muted and that's fine, okay. So, okay, we are now living in a hybrid world. Um, a lot of us are actually in a full virtual world here in Ireland, for example, we're in a full level five lockdown. I think it's probably one of the longest lockdowns uh, to date uh, anywhere across the world, and it's not a record we're particularly proud to uh, to be sharing. Um, it's one of those races you don't want to be coming first in for a change, but we're all uh, in the flood together. We're, as Grace Ann, my colleague, would say, we're we're all in the water. Some of us are at different points of the flood, and we're in different boats, but we are all uniquely in this flood together. So one of the things uh, I suppose that binds us together is this unique shared experience, and I guess. You know, one of the learnings from that is that we have all pivoted, to use that terrible phrase from earlier in the year, uh, onto the virtual platforms uh, in order to maintain our businesses and keep things going. So until we get the vaccination, we're going to be in this virtual space. We're, I guess, looking at it now, we're coming out of March, so we're, we're almost a full year, um, give or take, uh, at which point of the compass you entered into the equation, we're a full year in the virtual world. So, you know, when we emerge, once the vaccines have got to a critical mass from this difficult period in the collective human history, um, we would hopefully look to go to a new normal, if not a better normal. And I think, you know, without question, we won't be going back to the old normal. So what we're looking at to, you know, to make sure and be clear is a hybrid world. And we're in the foothills of the Himalayas in terms of the, the, the opportunity here. And I suppose at the outset, I, I would say, you know, one of those new words and we're you know if someone asked me a year ago what did zoom mean i would have thought it was going faster in a car or a motorbike or something like that to zoom along now it's almost become like google people are very familiar with the term zoom hopping on a zoom or hopping off a zoom or indeed uh, meets or uh, skype or whatever the virtual platform you're on so in the first instance you know as we're all in this together i wish at the outset everyone remain safe and in good health and that you and your families remain out of harm's way until you get through this difficult passage. And I guess, you know, what we must say is that we are entering into uh, an era of huge change in human evolution. We've probably seen uh, um, a jump of about seven years in one year in terms of digital acclimatization. And it's really been profound. And I guess where we're coming from and where we're going to are two separate spaces. But from a management consultancy point of view, there is one thing that we, we all have in common. We need to present well to our clients and our, our customers. And in order to do that in this particular discipline, it's not acceptable anymore uh, not to present well. So what we're gonna try and do here today is be practical with you and leave you with a few tips rather than to get into the hyperbole of the hybrid world. So to that end, let's dive straight in. Camera position, okay. So on that uh, particular area, the number one uh, issue that we get coming back is the whole area of, of, of cameras and positioning and so on. So, uh, you know, you're looking at Sean here. He's down on a beach in the Caribbean somewhere, uh, and he's happily working away uh, on his laptop. He's looking at an Excel spreadsheet. And one of the great things is that you can now, relatively speaking, work anywhere. And that's one of the great takeaways from this perspective. However, it doesn't mean that everywhere is appropriate. So from a, a consultancy point of view, you need to position yourself uh, in a frame of mind that to be mindful of the context of who your clients are, where they're coming from, and the position that they're looking at in terms of when they're talking to you. So, I mean, from Sean's point of view, it's probably not ideal from a optics because people are looking up at him, uh, which not necessarily, depending on your, your, your man grooming, uh, can be pleasant or unpleasant, but it's not an ideal scenario. So it's all about positioning. So Sarah here, for example, uh, has got it all going on. She's got a, um, a laptop, as you can see, uh, to the bottom left, and she's got her phone uh, up there on a stand. Now, you know, one of the great things over the last couple of years with the leaps in technology has been the technology on phone cameras has been phenomenal. And you're looking at iPhones and you're looking at uh, Android phones. The quality on those phones is far superior, generally speaking, to laptops and indeed PCs. So it's, it's an irony, actually, that you're probably better off using your, your camera phones uh, or, or, uh, in, in that particular instance rather than kind of laptops, which generally, um, you know, they can be a bit hit or miss. And even if you look at the, the upmarket ones like, you know, the Apple Macs, the cameras on them aren't great. So we'll talk a little bit about the quality of cameras in a moment or two. But I guess what I want to get across to you is the whole area of positioning. Now, you know, all of you are looking at this. Um, and you're seeing, uh, I suppose, the position of the camera is so important in terms of eye contact. 
you're looking at this particular guy here uh, and he's got a few things going on. So what you see here is a window. He's got his light behind him in terms of the appropriate thing behind his laptop. He's got good light coming on his face, natural light. He's got it elevated on a laptop stand. Uh, you'll notice the tone of the, the clothes he's wearing are neutral, so they're not kind of clashing. Again, a hot tip, don't wear stripes, plaid, any sort of clothing that uh, clash or have difficulty in terms of embracing the camera. And again, if you look behind him, he's got a dark background, which is actually ideal from a perspective of uh, showing yourself on the camera. Again, he's well organized. He's got his glass of water. He's got his pen uh, and he's got his notes. We would often recommend uh, that hybrid thing that I talked about of making sure that you have a pen and pencil beside you as well, um, because it's actually very important to take notes. Sometimes technology doesn't work and it can be just handy to have an uncluttered um, pen and pencil and a piece of paper beside you to take those notes. So get yourself organized and, and get yourself squared away. Now, body language is really important here. And, and Michael, you know, as I said, his light, his stand, his clothes, his height, the dark background, the water, they're all good. But his posture is very important as well. And there are some things you shouldn't do when attending uh, the virtual meetings that you are doing on a daily basis. I mean, don't lean into the desk um, or don't lean on the desk. This makes it look as though you are bored and uninterested in the conversation. And don't lean back in the chair as this can seem... Uh, that you're also unbothered by the conversation. And that's not really very professional. You want to come across in a professional capacity. And don't cross your arms as this can mean you're not paying attention to the conversation. Um, and, you know, folks, it is difficult in a virtual environment. In the normal circumstances, you're in a meeting, you're at a boardroom, you're in a, having a coffee or you're meeting your client. You have that anatomical linguistics, that body language that you can see and sense how the meeting is going. When you're in this virtual environment, it's very difficult to get a sense of the room because all you got is someone's head. So it is difficult to actually get that feedback. And therefore, it is important from your perspective when you're engaging with your clients that you do give them that feedback, that they can get a sense of your engagement. And, you know, if needs be, sit a little closer to the edge of your seat so you look engaged in the conversation. And Fergus will give you some really good tips in terms of ergonomics, how you can help yourself in that space. And you need to relax and expand your shoulders to show you're confident and comfortable and that you're fully engaged. Um, and, and how you sit in your posture really has a big, uh, I suppose, uh, you know, impact on your confidence in terms of the meeting and how you're helping those around you. And it, it shows that you're engaged. And that's really what you want to be doing and conveying that you're fully engaged. Hot tip here is avoid touching your face and hair too much. You know, if you're pulling at your ears or scratching your nose or uh, plucking your eyebrows during a conversation, not good at the best of times, particularly bad when the entire focus is pretty much on your face and shoulders. So touching your face throughout the meeting suggests that you are nervous. And this includes playing with your hair, as I said, and, you know, just try and avoid it. And, and if you needs be, fold your, your hands together and, and keep them below camera line in terms of virtual meetings. So that kind of helps you not come across as insecure or nervous. And um, one of my colleagues has a module in this space, uh, Sarah, and she particularly looks at the whole area of dealing with nerves on virtual platforms in terms of how you overcome them. And she's got a really powerful module there. Not going to go into it in any great detail. If you want to engage with us later on it, I'm sure we can, we can share some intel with you on that. So what you want to do is raise your eyebrows to show interest, nod your head when you agree with what the persons are saying and, and showing that you're actively listening and keep your hands on your lap or use them to write down notes. Uh, I use my hands a lot when I'm, when I'm talking, so um, I find it quite difficult. So sometimes I have to grasp my hands like this to keep them down. My wife gives out to me sometimes that my hands are all over the place and it can kind of uh, throw people off uh, on the virtual platforms. So again, you know, just be try uh, and adopt a relaxed posture such as you can. I want to show you this picture here. And again, it's about position. This is an interesting picture for one simple reason. Most of you won't recognize this man, but he's Pascal O'Donoghue, who is our, who is our minister for finance here, our number two minister in the state. And he's working away. And uh, I suppose it's interesting uh, from a practical example of using uh, what he's using. So as you can see, he's literally got an A4 ream of paper propping up his laptop, which is on top of a PC stand. And again, you're looking at his webcam as at uh, an appropriate eye level. It's very simple. He's taking his notes uh, as he's, he's speaking and listening. He's fully engaged in the meeting. He's got his water on his right. And I guess the takeaway from this is that, uh, you know, picture conveys an awful lot. He's got his light in the right position over to his right. He's got an uncluttered desk. But, you know, he's engaging with global leaders, world leaders. He's head of the uh, EU finance module at the moment. 
so on a daily basis, he's interacting on a global uh, basis with the top of the top people right across the globe. And, you know, the message here we want to convey to you is you don't have to spend an awful lot of money to get it right. The important thing is that it looks right from the external uh, perspective when people are looking at you. So if Pascal, uh, our minister, can teach you anything is you don't have to spend a lot of money to actually get to the right position. And again, folks, you know, it's all about eye contact. Human engagement is all about eye contact. They say the eyes are the mirrors to the soul. Well, as you guys know, in terms of business consultancy and management consultancy, most meetings and decisions are over in the first five seconds, sometimes even shorter, because people pick up that kind of body language and they look in your eyes and they shake your hand and they get a sense of who you are and where you're coming from. So that's difficult in this virtual environment. And that's why your eye contact and your positioning of your cameras are very important. And to that end, here's a picture of me, which I took when we were uh, out of lockdown. I was, I was going through that phase here in Ireland where we were all embracing sea swimming uh, and, and freezing, uh, freezing cold water in the Irish waters. Not the best of uh, times to be doing it around March last year. But that said, I use it as an example of, of eyeline contact. That's really the sweet spot where you want to be in terms of your, your eye contact. Again, your, your head wants to be a little bit lower that you're showing a little bit at the top of your head in terms of the screen, uh, and you want to be centered uh, in, the, in the space that you're looking at. Now, and that's a difficult, difficult thing because it's not your normal or natural uh, disposition to be looking at a camera which isn't feeding you back. Now, one of the tips you can do is actually quarter your screen and bring up uh, the visuals on a Zoom meeting up to the top quarter. So at least you're looking at your, yourself or your colleagues on the, the screen. But you know, human nature will draw your eye away to see how other people are reacting. And at that point, you lose eye contact. So again, I would say, if you, if you do nothing else, um, for example, what we would, we would recommend is get a little sticker. Uh, and as you see, look here, look here, you need to be looking here. That sweet spot is where you need to be looking at. So as I look at you now, I'm looking at that sweet spot. And you can practice it. It is a discipline. It is not easy, but it'll make a fundamental difference to how you come across in terms of the virtual world. And uh, if, if you do nothing else today, learn that lesson about actually looking at the, at the camera spot in that sweet spot. So it's as simple as just getting a little sticker and putting it there, and that will measurably help you in terms of your presentations. So another tip is just, you know, get ready, um, get meeting ready. Trial your software, get your Sage set, get uncluttered in terms of your, your work environment as much as possible. Do an equipment check, very, very important. So for example, before we did this, uh, I was joking with the, 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 the sound off, uh, just to show an example of doing an equipment check, but it is important to do an equipment check. So normally before you're doing a presentation, come on about 15 minutes beforehand. One of the most common things we do is people forget to do, um, uh, give the, the share option to people that are co-hosting. So something as simple as that, and be punctual. So if you're gonna say that you're, you're coming on at three o'clock, Rima was dead on the money there, right on the money. Start it at three, finish it when you say you're gonna finish it. One of the huge areas that we're seeing in our practice is wellness. And um, you know people are suffering from a huge amount of Zoom fatigue. And you know we have some issues that are coming down the tracks in terms of mental health and loneliness is a big issue as well. Um, you know, the R word was very much in the zeitgeist in the last quarter of last year. Everyone was talking about resilience. Um, so I don't really want to go down that path on today's module. But I, I think these issues are going to be huge uh, and we're going to have to deal with them. But one of the ways that we as management consultants can deal with them is be on time, stay on message, get through our agenda and close off when we said we were going to close off. Uh, one other final tip on this is in terms of dress code uh, before I hand over to Fergus. Um, people joke about kind of, you know, turning up in their shorts and their T-shirts and, and this, that and the other. We are professionals. OK, so my own view on this is if you're if you're presenting in a professional manner and you are uh, engaging with your clients, pay them the respect they deserve and dress appropriately. If you're sitting across from them at a boardroom or at a meeting or whatever, dress the same fashion when you're on these um, uh, platforms. I think uh, it helps you as well because you feel more professional about how you go about your business. Uh, we have a module on that. As I mentioned, you know, there are some tips and tricks. Probably the simplest one is wear plain clothes in terms of the ideal uh, scenario would be to wear a blue shirt, for example, or a black polo neck, which I'm wearing. Fergus, my colleagues, wearing a blue shirt. So, I mean, simple trips like that. Do not wear stripes, played, uh, any of those sartorially challenged um, ones because the camera can play with them and it can, it can cause uh, a lot of chaos depending on what sort of camera you're using. Another tip when you are looking at cameras, 
is probably go for a 1080 HD model. Um, you can get them fairly handily in terms of webcams and stuff like that if you're going down that path. So I'm gonna, gonna hand over to my colleague Fergus now and he's gonna to talk to you a little bit about his particular area. Okay, as uh, you're on mute. Hello everybody, you're on mute was the phrase for last year and it's slowly becoming the phrase for this year as well. But um, I'm gonna go into the camera one in a few minutes, but uh, the first one I wanna talk about is your speaker, your microphone. If you're in a room that has a lot of echo, you wanna get that microphone as close to your mouth as possible. Okay, or else you can put stuff in your room to absorb the uh, the echo like a rug or a, uh, I'm in a nice room here, which is lots of curtains. So that's actually absorbing a lot of the echo in this room. Well, this is a simple mic. A lot of the data centers will have that right beside a single earpiece so they can talk to other people if they need to on the other one. In this case here, you have the uh, ear pod or if you're an Apple user, AirPods. Um, Great for talking, great for listening to music, great for doing. The only problem with the, the wireless ones is that if there's a lot of chatter on the call, it can actually lead to interference and you're missing part of it. So be careful on that. If you're giving a presentation like I am here, it's no problem. You have a constant uh, voice coming from this end of the camera. On the, on the next one, we have the uh, speakers. Speakers are so important nowadays. Um, from the point of view of the, uh, the environment you're in, you can see that this lady here has a, a colleague or a partner if they're working from home in the background. So I typically would use the speakers on my uh, computer uh, to listen to what's going on. But in this case, you can actually put in a wireless speaker or you can put in a wired speaker just to uh, stop the annoyance for your partner or your colleague next door to you. On the next one, we have grandma ringing whoever the grandchildren are, their daughters, or sons, and talking away there, not interfering with the uh, elderly gentleman in the background who's having a bit of a giggle with himself. I'm not sure what's going on there. But, uh, you know, it's privacy. The microphones on these, on these headsets are very, uh, very, uh, shall I say, sensitive. So you don't have to talk very loud. You can communicate exactly. And the people around you don't have to hear what you're saying, but you can hear everything from a nice, comfortable headset. On the next one, we have the, uh, well, I call this the beast. Um, this is, you know, if you want to go top of the range, you want to do a podcast, you want to do, you know, we're not working in a TV show or a radio uh, uh, station. So if you want one of these to sound crystal clear, these are condenser microphones. Um, if you play music, you want to record your music, you play the guitar, you play any, any type of thing, you can use this to record the music. Uh, they go for about $100 upwards to a couple of thousand dollars, depending on the quality you want. Uh, Technology is getting cheaper now. So AirPods are a couple of hundred dollars now. I'd say in two years time, they'll be down to less than $100 with the competition that's out there. So on the next one, we have the, um, and the, the, the guys, the other, my, 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 uh, my fellow colleagues in GFSP will actually tell you, this is one of my pet hates. Being on mute is fine. Uh, but when you join a meeting, let's say you're having a management meeting or a client meeting or even meeting with your colleagues, and then some of your colleagues or your, or your team are, have their camera off. I think uh, from a personal experience, it can be for one of two reasons. Either they don't want to show they're an introvert, they are shy coming on. And I think this is where the company uh, needs to uh, develop the, the, the confidence in these people. But when you hear things like, oh, my bandwidth is very bad, I just don't want to have it on. Like, you know, it's, it's a respect thing. You're coming on for a meeting. I certainly do a lot of meetings, um, three or four a day. And I have a, a kind of a rule. I try not to have the meeting go anywhere more than 30 minutes. I have an agenda. I start on time, go to the agenda points. If there's anything that comes up on the agenda that doesn't uh, really meet what the, the meeting is about, either we'll discuss it if it's an important one, but then if it's not, I'll hold it off to the next meeting. But I'm very conscious and people have now appreciated that, that, right, I'm going on for a meeting with Fergus. It's only going to be 30 minutes max. Great, I can go on my life after that. Some meetings go on for hours, management meetings. And again, it's important you're there. You're in the camera, you're showing interest, you're nodding, you're smiling, you're interacting. And it's very important that people put their camera on as a show of respect to the people who are actually presenting. On the next one, we have lighting. Lighting is so important. Um, we have a saying in Ireland, we get the four seasons every day. Um, cloudy, winter, summer, you know, sunshine coming in the window here. I've actually had to move my desk, it's so bright here. 
uh, in Germany. Um, so lighting is critical to if you're working long hours. And a lot of people are saying now they're working nearly an hour longer than they are virtually than they were when they were going into a company. So it's important that we control the lighting. And on the next slide, you'll see an example of me. So this is me. And on the bottom left, you'll see not a great photo, not something you want to be uh, as a consultant presenting yourself to your clients. So I think you'll agree that as you go across it, you see the next one is the lighting is on the left hand side of my face and the shadow on the right hand side. Again, lovely bright day behind me. Great to look out the window. Not great for the people who are participating in the presentation. Too bright. And in particular, where there is virtual calls, where the central speaker will come up in the middle of the computer screen, that can be quite annoying because it's so bright. And then the last one there on the top right is perfect, full facial there. You see the lighting there. Um, you'll see a little bit of reflection off my glasses. You can probably see it here as I move my head around there, there's a bit of reflection. That can come from the daylight that's outside, but also in nighttime. And this is a little trick. There's two things you can do. You can get your glasses coated with a non-reflective coating, which is your, your optician will do that. Uh, you can also buy glasses. But what I do is at nighttime, I actually turn down the brightness on my screen. Now, not off, but obviously I just turn it down low enough that the reflection on my glasses is uh, as minimal as possible, but I can still see people and interact with people on the uh, other side of the camera. On the next one, we have a ring light. Um, this is quite a big ring light, but the ring lights now are from $20 to $25. You can see she has the camera on the, in the center and she's uh, interacting with the person on the camera. As, as Pat said earlier on, the cameras now, like you know, a typical camera on a computer is about 720 DPI. Uh, some of the cameras on the, on the smartphones are, you know, 1500, 1800, two and a half thousand DPI. So there's amazing quality on the smartphone. So I think you're gonna see these ring lights becoming a lot more popular. Um, obviously not great for spreadsheets, not great for doing uh, detailed work. But as you can see with this, there's lots of light on our face here, even though it's daylight behind her. So it's a, it's a good combination there. And it's a good example of a ring light. Again, that particular ring light is probably 35 to $45. Um, I'll hand over to Pat now for the next one. So thanks, Fergus. And I mean, we, we would highly recommend on the ring lights. It's, it's one of the ones that we would say, you know, do yourself a favor, get a ring light because it controls a lot of the environment and it helps really uh, manage that backlight issue that Fergus spoke to and that we, we, we showed you earlier. So this is, uh, you know, uh, an ongoing issue that we're seeing. Uh, we talked about wellness earlier, but people um, are getting a huge amount of migraines because of the amount of time they're spending on screen. Now, okay, she's, Sarah here has got a few things going on, but uh, again, she's laying in some issues in terms of her posture. Obviously, the laptop is not at an ideal position moving down, but the takeaway here is that she's, she's having uh, pain and she's having migraine. What can we do to help, okay? Or what can you do to help yourself? So the, the issue here is blue light. Some of you may have heard of this, but when you're spending that much time on screen, blue light becomes a material problem. And, you know, the, the knock on that is that it has an impact on your REM, your, your rapid eye movement uh, in terms of sleep patterns and your circadian rhythms. And that's really kind of a challenge. And you, you want to be managing that, particularly as you get older. But the Zoom fatigue combined with a, a huge amount of migraine is, is not a good combination. So what you can do and what we highly recommend is you consider getting blue rice glasses. Now they're quite easily got. Uh, again, Sarah recommends them and she's our specialist in this area. This is a working example of them. They look absolutely the same as normal. As Fergus has said, you can get them from your, your optician and you can get a special glaze on them as well to deal with the actual uh, reflective issue. But I mean, I, I'm wearing a pair myself. I have to say they've made a profound change to my sleeping pattern. I was spending way too much time on screen, still am, uh, I'd have to say. Um, but since I started wearing them, and we, we've tested this among our team as well, the feedback has been phenomenal. So again, one tip here, you can pick these up for no, you know, a couple of dollars, um, pay, a, you know, probably want to be paying 25 euros for a reasonable set, make sure that they're QE marks, that, they're, you know, that they've got some sort of backing to them, that they're not coming out of the back of a, uh, of a shed. But I mean, pay some money, get a decent pair. But you can go into your opticians, actually, when you're getting your prescription refilled, and actually asked them to have the, the blue light uh, mechanism put in. So we would highly recommend blue light. Um, again, hot tip from GFSP, recommend getting blue light glasses. 
Uh, one of the issues that we're seeing, uh, you know, and hearing uh, a lot of and dealing with is, is noise. And I know, Fergus, you've got a couple of comments to make on that. Yeah, well, you know, how many times I've got two kids as well. And uh, how many times have they jumped up and surprised us in relation to when you're working away there now? Thankfully, this gentleman isn't on a call. He could be on a call. And, you know, it's quite cute when you see uh, kids and dogs and cats and everything jump up and do a, do a, Zoom, uh, a Zoom attendance at one of your, one of your calls. Um, it, it can be quite uh, engaging. It can, it can quite take the tension out of the meeting if it's appropriate. Um, obviously, if it's happening all the time, it becomes a bit uh, monotonous. And I think uh, it's important to set the rules when you're working from home. If you're on a call, you're on a call. So try not to get uh, disturbed. On this one, you see this lady here. She's got the two kids uh, playing in the background. She could be on a she could be on a call like this. It could be someone listening to a call like this and there's a load of noise in the background. You know, the best way to get around this is put a set of headphones in, put wireless headphones in. So at least you can walk around, play with the kids and also listen to what's going on. OK, the next one. Um, right. How many people do online purchasing? Everybody. Everybody's doing an online purchasing now. That courier will come between three o'clock and five o'clock. OK, wow. I'm on a call at four. Pets coming in. Homeschooling. One of the one of the things I've done at my home is I've actually put in a camera doorbell. So the camera doorbell is connected to my phone. If the doorbell rings, I can see who's there. And if it's something important, I can just excuse myself. And a lot of people are appreciative when you say, listen, I'll be back in a second. Just give me one second. You go out, you come back. And, you know, everybody's understanding when they know things are happening like that. So be, be aware of that. Be conscious of that. If you're chairing a meeting, um, uh, set, set the rules around it, like, no, try not to get to be disturbed. If you are going to be disturbed, just send me a, ch a private chat to say, listen, I have something coming. I'll be out for two minutes and back again. Yeah. So, Fergus, I mean, that's uh, that's our collective what if. I, I think we'll all join together and say only if only we had invested in Amazon uh, before this pandemic, because everyone is buying stuff on Amazon now. I don't know what their shares are, but it must be a very, very happy space. So look, um, going on to that thing I mentioned earlier about new words that are coming into the, uh, the, the, the lexicon, Zoomscaping uh, is one of those words. And Zoomscaping is really how you curate your background. And I see some of our colleagues here have virtual backgrounds behind them, and that's absolutely fine. But it also, you know, we're talking about netiquette, how you behave, and we've got some modules in that. And again, the, the whole area of, of, of green screens and business backgrounds and ensuring that they're contextually relevant and, and, and you know, to a large degree, not palm trees, uh, which are getting a bit kind of passe at this point. So it's important to know your audience, guys. Uh, and know the context of the engagement that you're on. It's fine in an engagement like this where there's a, it's a learning module, no, no particular problem of having your, your cameras turned off, certainly have your sound turned on, no issue whatsoever because it's not a commercial engagement and you, you're not presenting. However, you know, if you look at the, 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 the first screen there in terms of the, the gentleman kind of presenting, he's actually doing an interview. You can see he's got the, the resume there. So he's doing a live interview. And that's very important how you present there that you get your best possible uh, persona presented. And you need to kind of give that uh, due care and attention. Equally, the one on the right is uh, um, a mom and her daughter talking to uh, her mom and her dad and uh, the, grand, uh, the grandparents. So that's fine. It's a different context. Happy to be eating and uh, having some fun. And it's a different kind of engagement. It's much more social. It's much more relaxed. And then the, the third one at the bottom is something like similar to what we're doing here now. There could be, you know, from a dozen to two dozen to 200 people. We, we've done Zooms up to 500 people on webinars. Indeed, we've done, I think the max was about 750. So that's a, a, a different context and a different engagement as well. But I guess that the takeaway here is if you are in a situation and we deliberately uh, chose our normal backgrounds to give you an example of what it looks like, uh, the reality of the situation. So we've chose what we've, we've done today. But if we're presenting to clients, for instance, in the, in the corporate landscape, we would often use, for instance, this which is our office uh, backdrop. And we'll throw that in, in terms of our backdrop. It looks clean, it looks efficient. Uh, and you're normally sitting maybe kind of virtually uh, over to the left or the right, depending on where your camera is positioned. Um, we are Zoom partners and we're very proud to be Zoom partners. Uh, we're one of the first here in Ireland in terms of uh, parking with, uh, with Zoom. So I'm gonna give you a real hot off the press GFSP tip here. So Zoom, uh, one of the, the, the tricks we would say to you is, regularly make sure that your software is up to date uh, in terms of the version that you have. 
So it's important to refresh that. Look at it every, certainly every fortnight, but maybe every week, just to make sure that you got the latest uh, uh, version of software. The reason you want to do that is because they enhance it the whole time. So as a case in point, uh, Shona here, um, you will see has a blurred background, okay? Hot off the press, guys, okay? In the last 72 hours, Zoom have brought in this new feature. And, and, and to that end, as you can see, just beside none, some of you will be familiar with backgrounds and filters and how you go around that. So it's a setting within your general settings. You drop down to background and filters here. You look at virtual backgrounds. Uh, you know, traditionally people, a lot of them use the, the golden gate and so on. And, and, you know, from space, we don't think they're generally particularly appropriate. But now, uh, as you can see, they brought in blur. And, and that's, I suppose, competitively in response to, to Teams, which you would have seen uh, has that feature. And a lot of you would have seen that. So the great thing about that is you got that blurred background. So you can be in your kitchen, you can be in your garden, you can be wherever you want to be, and you present very professionally, and it gives a clean body uh, body output as well. So as you can see, uh, she looks very well there and looks very clean, looks very professional. And uh, we're, we're delighted to be actually able to share that new information with you. So you, you got something hot off the press from Zoom, state-of-the-art technology. Um, and again, posture, as I talked to you about earlier, it's very important. And I mean, to that end, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about ergonomics. I'm going to ask Fergus, because this is his area of, of acute interest and specialty, maybe just to chat a little bit about ergonomics to you. Yeah, ergonomics, uh, as, as we say, we, we can get multiple chairs, we can get multiple computers, we can get multiple jobs, but we can only have one body. And for me, um, the chair is probably the number one item I do invest money in. And uh, I have kind of got a chair for myself, which allows me to keep my back straight, shoulders out, and making sure I'm up, I suppose, facing the camera. Now, this gentleman here, he's got his computer over to the side. Now, I don't know how many of you guys would actually use that and put the computer over the side, in particular on the desks that have a curve in it. There's a, there's a temptation to go into the curve and put the, the computer over there. If you're using multiple uh, monitors, maybe you have two big monitors and then you have your small computer on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, you're reaching over. It's important that you're not reaching. And this guy is really suffering and uh, we'll have to get him onto our, our module on the uh, Pilates instructor and some tips and tricks. But there's a very simple trick you can do. And um, that is to get your posture and sitting forward in the seat. What you can do, you can get a folded towel and put it towards the back of the seat. So when you sit in your seat, you're actually leaning forward. The whole idea, and this is a tip from our Pilates instructor who does modules with us, is that you want to be leaning your kind of body forward. Now you're still touching the back of your backrest, but you're leaning forward and putting a towel on your seat will create that feeling. Now you can buy some, you can buy some chairs that have a tilt forward function. Uh, most of them don't. And this is the chair that has that function. It allows up and down movement of the armrests where you can rest your arms while you're on your keyboard. The headrest for a gentle stretch if you want to stretch back. And then the back rest allows all sorts of, all sorts of uh, motions. Now, most chairs are rated to about 130 kg. So be careful if, uh, if you want a chair rated higher than that, you need to uh, research it more from the point of view of uh, the, the specification that you want to uh, have your chair far but we can help you with that should you wish us to do that we can do that for you and um, but that's our tips and tricks of the ergonomic side of things and i'll just hold, hold hand over to pat now so guys uh we said we keep on time so we're bang on uh the 40 minute mark and i'm delighted to come in literally uh on the nose there so Rima will be very pleased and on behalf of my colleagues uh grace Ann, sarah Fergus and myself, we're delighted to share this uh, information with you. And I mean, today is really a whistle stop tour, giving you an overview of what is really a, a huge subject. And we've been really very busy in this space and fortunate to be. But I mean, in terms of subject matter, you know, we've touched on a few whistle stop elements in terms of ergonomics, wellness, light, camera, sound, and so on. And these, you know, these tips and tricks really can help you without any major cost implications. So, you know, we were talking amongst ourselves and as it's coming up to Easter and as a goodwill gesture, uh, we're gonna offer the, uh, the Institute members a 25% discount for any of our modules. If any of you wanna get in touch with us, happy to do that as a goodwill gesture on this particular occasion. So just drop us a line at hello at GFSP. But in the meantime, look, uh, thank you Rima for affording us the opportunity. It's been a wonderful, um, uh, I suppose, 
a classic example of a virtual uh, presentation to a global audience. And, and wow, um, thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that and happy to take any questions at this point. Thank you, Pat, and thank you, Fergus. I mean, I was so into it listening. Uh, I got a few tips that are wonderful. And I know that um, there are notes and questions in, in the chat. I will start moderating those now. And please keep on typing if there is more, but we will keep it to the hour. Um, the first note from Carlo, actually, it's a question. A hybrid world, does it necessarily mean a hybrid approach or hybrid contact? Patrick, Burgess, whoever wants to comment, answer. Well, maybe I'll, I'll just touch on it first. Uh, and I suppose it's a good question, but I would see it as a, uh, an opportunity because we see it here ourselves. We're dealing with people uh, that we wouldn't normally get to engage with because of the, the virtual capacity that we have now. In the past, we'd have jumped on a plane and the wear and tear in the body. We'd have had to travel you know, for a day to get to a meeting that might last an hour and make a presentation. So we are, um, we're fully embraced on the hybrid model, okay, as you'd expect us to say. But I think for management consultants moving forward, um, you know, it's a sophisticated profession. That's, you know, we are generally known to be um, at the cutting edge of whatever the niche specialty that we're doing in terms of the, that's why people pay consultants to actually get the knowledge that they don't have themselves. So you would expect um, that uh, it would be a hybrid model moving forward. Uh, and I think in fairness, uh, I think those skills um, I, I think they're going to be part of the everyday. So those digital natives, if you look at the children coming up, the teenagers, the, the early 20s who are coming up very fast up the rear, I think we have to also um, adopt that kind of digital native linguistics that they're comfortable with in terms of engaging in the hybrid world. So yes, to answer your question is, I think it has to be both moving forward. Fergus, you may have a comment. Yeah, no, I'd agree. Like, you know, if you, if, you know, they, they, they ask, ask, ask the 20 year old, does he remember mobile phones, the Nokia 6, uh, 6310, like, you know, we look at you and say, I've always had a smartphone. So the uh, techno technologically aware, but also technologically unaware, because one of the main things they all do is hit the agree button on the terms and conditions. So there is a, a an education that uh, we as the older group for them have to educate them don't be giving away all your data, you know, control that, make sure you're, you're working in a, in, a, in a virtual world, but make sure you're not being, uh, shall we say, corrupted by the, the, the dazzle and, and shininess and brightness of these uh, new technologies that are coming out every couple of years. So definitely it's, uh, it's everybody from, from, uh, from the elderly people down to the young people, they're all able to get technologically aware. So let's just go do it and let's help them as consultants to share that technological and open doors for them. I, I, I just add as well, just maybe to, to dovetail that, is that we did a survey, a client survey recently, um, just asking them what their preferred methods of communication were. And we were surprised ourselves. Um, almost 80% of people actually in the professional client space chose WhatsApp as their preferred method of, of communications at the moment, which was a surprise to us uh, because we, we hadn't fully, I suppose, uh, um, embraced the, the concept that that's where it's at, that it had leapt forward that much, because we, we think of WhatsApp a little bit sometimes more on the social side than the commercial side, but you know, that's where it's at. Thank you both. And, and, and WhatsApp, that is actually something to think of, because to me, again, it's all friends, it's all groups, and it's all uh, jokes, actually. Um, Adelman added a note. As another tip, I would like to suggest that the mic settings in Zoom are reviewed as there are options to help compress or reduce background noise. Thank you, Adelman. Norma is asking a question. And hi, Norma. Uh, my walls are off white, so I do not have a dark background. What is your feeling about using virtual back backgrounds? My concern about these is that it, the edge of the head is generally blurry. And that is what's happening with me with my hair. That is your concern, Norma, right? So Pat, what do you think, Fergus? Yeah, I think um, I would generally say that they're, they're okay. And it depends again on your computer. Um, 
you know, I've got, I actually bought a green screen, uh, a green screen. I, I, I was a sucker and uh, I, I went and uh, on Amazon one evening and I bought one, even though I didn't need one. I think if you have a green screen and you can buy one of those fairly handily now and, and they'll wrap around their pop up, they're, they're quite um, very easy to use. They make a huge difference in terms of that particular issue, um, as opposed to using the computer technology that's inbuilt. Um, a white background is fine, um, but it, you have to bear in mind that what you're wearing in terms of your clothes is going to have a big yeah. impact on that norma. So, um, you know, you need to kind of curate the clothes that you're wearing appropriate to uh, a white background. But um, I would say a dark background is probably better, if at all possible. And that's why they talk about a green screen or a blue screen. So um, it's, it's doable. I think I'd probably said the more important thing is to be uncluttered background. Now, I say that with a, a wall full of books behind me against myself. So, you know, uh, don't kill the messenger. But I think an uncluttered background like Fergus has, for example, or Margaret there, uh, I see has, a, has an uncluttered background. So those sort of backgrounds are, uh, you know, probably the way to go. Thank you, Pat. Um, Silva has a note, and maybe it is something that we all should look into. She says, I advise to use crisp application which is reducing cancelling the noise this is a new and prospecting startup from armenia so thank you for sharing silva uh she also replied to norma and and that was about the ba background um john brian to everyone he's saying that for people who suffer from migraines draw, try green 255 as a background for your screen and not blue yeah yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's, a that's absolutely thing. on the money. That's a good catch. Green mm -hmm. is a much more. Uh, uh, he's he's absolutely right there, and uh, we we would have picked that up in one of our modules. That the actual use of color is so important in this area, and, and Fergus touched on it a little bit in terms of reducing uh, the light, the ambient light on your computer as well. But he's spot on the money there, and it's worth spending time on Zoom and learning the settings as well, and really kind of maybe revisiting the settings on your computer uh, and going into those settings and have a look at the, the, the visual aspects of it in terms of light particularly. Um, Dwight has a question and a note. He says, who has invested in a desktop that allows you to sit or stand? I have just about convinced myself that the option to stand for presentations is important. For presentations, yes, Dwight, but for meetings, you'd have to sit, my dear. Be careful. Um, Jermaine is saying a stand-up deal is a great investment. I have one just uh, that just sits on a traditional desk, so everyone is buying in on it. Um, I, I might is, just say, please, Rima, there, yeah. Fergus is a big advocate of stand-up desks. And uh, hi, Dwight, uh, our, our president uh, from Canada. So I know Fergus is dying to maybe make a comment on that. So maybe you'd share something there, Fergus? Yeah, I, 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 I think from a wellness point of view and a, and a purely, you know, I, I have a desk, a stand-up desk, and I stand in the morning and use it in the evening time to sit down on the chair. Um, as a little treat for myself, so I and I can move around. I have meetings on it. I have people standing. It forces people to stand uh, and have a meeting with you. In the old days, when we were all meeting in, in offices and that, but the stand-up desk, I can't like. I can buy them now, a manual one from, in IKEA for about two hundred and fifty. Now, if you get a fancy one, you're up at around the twelve hundred to fifteen hundred euro mark. But definitely, a, a sit-stand desk is the way to go. You can also get a little. Uh, it's like a little tabletop that sits on top of the table and expands out about maybe oh, 300 to 400 uh, millimeters. Yeah. So, uh, and that allows you to stand as well. Um, it depends on what type of uh, table you put it on uh, or desk you put it on, but they're, they're just as ideal. And they're about 110 euro to 170 euro. So yeah. definitely sit stand is the way to go, yeah. We have more options now. Norma is telling us about the kneeling chair, where she actually kneels uh, and sits at the same time. So, Norma, send us photos. Our, uh, our colleagues, our colleagues, Grace Ann and and Sarah, would be high advocates of that particular uh, aspect, and they sing its praises. So she's spot on the money again, and really? they really are good. Yeah. So, let's try them. Okay, maybe I'll invest in that. Um, Daniel Chan is saying thanks for the useful tips. Uh, Marina also says thanks. So everyone now is saying thank you. What about more questions? Here's one. 
Christian is asking any tips, suggestions for virtual backgrounds, as in what type of virtual backgrounds that would meet with everyone. Um, if I may say something about it, I love the fact that Dwight, myself, for example, use our own visuals, use what the ICMCI is in order to help in the branding and what have you. So maybe that could be a good point. But Patrick, Fergus, please. Yeah, no, we, we would concur with that. And I showed you the one that GFSP uses, which is our office with a, a GFSP logo on the, the screen, the overhead screen that we use. So I, I, I would absolutely concur. And if you're on a team, consistency is important as well, because if you're presenting, it's good to show a consistent uh, collegiate approach. It, it gives that subliminal message of professionalism. And again, our profession is all about that management consultancy. So it's important to present well. So I would say consistency, uh, uncluttered, clean, um, and, you know, if, you, if you're coming from an office, why not take a, a picture of your office uh, if, there's, if there's a good one to be had and use that? There's no reason why you shouldn't. We have a good one here, and um, it's about one-on-one -on -one meetings. Um, it's from Jermaine. And the question is, during a one-on-one -on -one or small group, do you suggest looking at the person's image on your screen as you listen? Then look at the camera for the reply. I, I can answer this one. Um, uh, some of the features in a lot of the uh, Teams and Zooms allows you to move the, the, uh, the person you're talking to around. And what I do a little trick, I just move the person who's talking to just under the camera. So, you know, you're looking straight at the camera, but you're actually just glancing down at the person just to see what their reaction is, raised eyebrows, yawning, <laughs> bored. Um, so dirty reactions you're looking for, but you know, it's, it's, it's the way to do it. It's just, and you know, use your peripheral vision as well. We all have a, a very big and wide peripheral vision. And as Pat said at the outset, it takes practice, like playing football, driving a car, driving a Zoom meeting or driving a Teams meeting takes practice. So use your peripheral vision to uh, pick up on the subtleties of people's movement. That's what I'd say. Yeah, and I, I'll go back to that simple one, uh, Rima, apologies, but actually, I know it's very basic, but it's, it's kind of idiot proof, if I can use that word, of actually just getting a little bit of tape sometimes and pointing an arrow at the camera to remind you to look at the camera, because it's that basic, and it is that human need to have eye contact, and I know, you know, the more it is a constant theme that we get back, that if you look at what bugs people, um, really deep down, it's that lack of eye contact at meetings because people are all over the place. So yeah, even on a one-on-one, -on -one, probably even more so. So I agree with Fergus there, yeah. In this webinar, Fergus's position on my screen is the best. So I've been looking at you most of the time, Fergus. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Baha is asking us another question. What is the best advice to force everyone to turn his or her cam on during a client's meeting? Oh, okay. Course, this, is, okay. This, is one, this is one for me. Um, when I go on meetings, um, and it's, it's just, you know, especially if you use the first few minutes of the meeting as the opening, the how are things, how's the weather, where, how's home, you use, oh, I can't see you there. Uh, are, you, are you on? And then it, it nearly forces the person on the other end of the, of the camera to switch on their camera and just get them used to that. That's your... Uh, you know, you appreciate them and you have to appreciate them. You have to say, oh, great, great to see you. Oh, you're looking really well. How are things, you know? And make it lighthearted, but making the point. And in particular, if you're a manager, um, it's probably different with clients. You can't really tell a client to turn on the camera. But uh, if you're a manager and you're working with a team of colleagues, it's, it should be like nearly a company rule that you, you uh, have your cameras on. Um, my son in school, has been doing Zoom classes for the last year. And the rule of the school is you must have your camera on. Some schools don't do it, but his school is you must have the camera on. You can turn your sound off, obviously, but you must have your camera on. So for me, it depends on the people you're dealing with. If you have an introvert, as I mentioned earlier, um, it might be a one-on-one. -on -one. You'll do it them, say, just, you know, you know, I want you to do a, a short presentation um, next week for five minutes and then just, you know, be patient with them. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, so just get them used to it because people are not used to being on a camera. People hate hearing their voices. People, you know, just don't like looking at themselves because they kind of want to make themselves look well. So it takes practice, it takes time, but as consultants, we have to do it. 
we have to do it because if we don't do it, another consultant is going to do it. <laughs> well, I, I would say um, uh, the tips I heard in that particular one, which one of my colleagues shared with me, uh, is a very good tip. So he, he simply says at the outset of the meeting, if, if that is an issue, he says, so the good news, guys, is we're recording this session that's been shared with head, uh, head office later. So it'll be going into the performance related pay sessions. So, uh, you know, if you don't want to show your face, that's your call, but uh, be advised. <laughs> so most people at that point turn on their, their videos fairly quickly. Um, but Fergus is right. People can be a bit shy about the whole thing and it's not an area of comfort. And most people don't like hearing their voice. So again, to the whole point of the conversation we've just had, do yourself a favor, curate your background and get yourself in good order. Help yourself with a little bit of light, um, you know, hop into kind of uh, doing a bit of study in the space, get a little bit of mic uh, going on and get a decent camera. And that can actually change the game. And maybe, maybe, and you, can, you guys can tell me if this is correct uh, or not, uh, to actually send that, in the meeting invitation or when you're asking or calling for the meeting to just say that cameras should be on because we need to actually virtually meet. Is that wrong practice? No, but I think what we would say is we, we have a, a module on netiquette, okay, which is that the, look, it's, this is common respect, okay, for your, for your fellow players. This comes down to respect. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think on small meetings of up to maybe uh, certainly 10 or 15 people. It is a matter of common courtesy and respect that you're there. In the same way, if you're at a, a, in a meeting room, it wouldn't be sufficient that you have your head under the table or you're, you know, you, if you're there, you're there. So as a matter of respect to the people that are participating, we would recommend, and I certainly would, you know, um, be very strong on this is that, you know, you are there and your camera is on. That's different for something like this where you can, you know, you can have a couple of hundred people on. It doesn't really matter because it's a teaching module and that's different. But for smaller meetings and corporate meetings, I think for, for us at our level, Rima, I mean, the, we're management consultants, you know, I mean, we, I think your clients and your, your colleagues will expect you to be present. Correct. Correct. There's a question from Norma again. Should the camera be at eye level or below eye level? Eye, eye level. level. Okay. Magnus is saying we're nearer each other virtually compared to in-person meetings. It's more invasive. What is your take on that? My wife can still uh, contact me very easily up in the, in the back office here and give out to me virtually as easily as she can do it physically. So his Magnus is probably right there. Um, I, I think what it does um, is it affords us the opportunity to reach out to people that we wouldn't have had a meaningful conversation with um, more regularly. And it's people are open to getting that. I saw a very nice thing. I mean, loneliness, uh, just on a sidebar, is a big issue uh, on this whole kind of Zoom uh, experience we're having, human loneliness. And I saw a lovely thing here in Ireland uh, there last year where um, Post, our postal service, did a lovely thing insofar as they gave everyone in the state two letters, free letters that they could send to anyone. They sent out two postcards. And all the children in the, the country sent, generally sent two cards to their grandparents. And if all these letters or, or postcards were pop popping all over the place. And there was, there was a great bit of happiness around for a while. But it's, it's to that point as consultants, communications is our game. OK, that's what we're, we, you know, we, we, I suppose, we're very much vested in that space of communications and engagement. So I would suggest perhaps as, as one of the takeaways you could do uh, in terms of that is every now and then, actually, it's really powerful to get a handwritten note. So maybe just, uh, you know, look at your top 10 clients and drop one, you know, take two a week and just drop them out and say, look, John or Mary or Rima, just thinking of you, no particular reason, just wants to reach out and say, you know, I hope you get through safely and look forward to getting to meet you again for a coffee or a beer or whatever you're having on the other side and stay safe and, you know, um, uh, hope all well. And actually getting a letter in the post that's handwritten as opposed to a bill at the moment uh, is a very powerful thing and a personal thing. So maybe that can uh, kind of bridge that hybrid world of having a physical letter, um, but equally not physically being there. Jermaine has a nice comment there, and that could be our last comment, actually, because we are at the hour. Um, and it's about people not having private environments before, but now everyone is or has a home office. So 
um, just use them, guys. Let's see your faces. Let's all get acquainted properly, even if virtual. Um, everyone is saying thank you. I have lots uh, of thank yous uh, there in the, in the chat. And Bilal is asking you, Patrick, what type of camera are you using? Because it seems like it's a good resolution one. Well, uh, I listened to Grace Ann and Sarah, my colleagues, who are the experts in this area, and they advised me to get a Logitech uh, 920 HP, which um, um, my um, uh, I begrudged paying, I think it was 90 euros for it. But I have to say they were right. As usual, they were spot on the money, and I, I have to give them full credit for, for pointing me in that direction. So I, early on, recognized that the camera, and it was a new MacBook that I'm using, um, wasn't up to, the, up to scratch. And given the game that we're in, um, we felt that we should you know, make the investment and jump up. So for a small investment, we were able to set up uh, you know, a, a relatively good in, uh, home office. And one of the modules that we have is a physical module of walking you through the door and stepping you up in terms of each of the pieces of kit from your mic to your camera, to your light and all those pieces in between at a reasonable cost without breaking the bank and getting you up to professional standard. And if, you know, if I say anything to you guys, we are in this for the long haul. We're, we're a long way from home, I guess, in terms of getting out of the virtual world. As I say, we're still in lockdown level five on the bowl step here. We won't be out of it anytime before uh, Easter and certainly have another few weeks ahead of us. And it remains to be seen if we if we get out of it for the summer. So I, I think for the rest of this year, you know, one way or the other, we're going to be in one stage of, of uh, virtual engagement. So do yourselves a favor and make that little bit investment to help yourselves and make yourself more presentable corporately for your clients. So thank you for listening. And Rima, it's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Pat and Fergus. Everyone's saying thank you that it was great, uh, a great session with beautiful tips. And uh, people are saying even though they arrived late, they were able to grasp, but you will get uh, the full video uh, link. You will get the full presentation as well. Once it's provided to us, you can contact Pat and Fergus for any further information you need. You already got your special offers. So thank you for being with us. We will contact you soon with all the details and the information as promised. And until then, take care, keep safe, and hope to see you in the next webinar we have.